So zombies are, are here at a TED Talk. They're here. Yeah, yeah, they're here. It might not be what you think. I mean, if you see zombies, you're going to want to run, right? And this is about escape. That's the theme today, escape. Except, I don't know, man, when I think of escape, I think of something different. I, I think of the South Pacific. I think of majestic mountains. I think of movies or, or books. I don't know, though, that those are the main ingredients of an escape. I mean, I've, I've never been to the South Pacific, and I'm told that the scenery is stunning, that, that the water is impossibly blue, that, that the breeze is transcendent, and still, I can't imagine those are the main features of what it takes to get away. And why do I say that? Well, we've all come back from vacation, right? And we've sat in something like this, one of these cubicles. And yes, yeah, sometimes we feel like we got away, but other times we don't, man. It's awful. And some of those massively unsatisfying vacations have taken place in those same majestic mountains, those same tropical paradises. So those can't be the main ingredients. It just doesn't make sense. I think escape is something smaller. I think it's inside of us. Uh, I mean, w when you get away, when, when you really get away, you sigh less. You might not even sigh at all. Your back doesn't bother you. And these changes happen seamlessly. They might even happen unconsciously. So, so what I'm getting at is that escape is nuanced, it's subtle, it's sublime. But that poses a problem for my topic today, right? I mean, zombies, they're not so nuanced. They're not, as a rule, known for being sublime. So let's, let's reboot this whole scenario. Let's go back to that tropical island, but this time, there's a zombie apocalypse, okay? It's happening. You've seen the movies, this is not a surprise. So they're coming out of the palm trees and they're staggering like this and one of them reaches forward and grabs your spouse and takes a bite out of her cheek. And, and you know there's nothing you can do, but you've seen the movies, so you're gonna go help her. And your buddy, he's seen the movies too, he knows his lines. He says, leave her man, leave her, she's dead, she's already bit, it's over. This is not a subtle moment. This is not nuanced. So. How am I going to do this? How am I going to make the case for all of you that the concept of the zombie, the way I think of a zombie, the trope of the zombie, is intricately tied to escape, to the notion of escape? I just told you escape is sublime, and I told you that zombies are not sublime. They're not nuanced. And yet, there's zombies in the room right now, right now. Somehow they got their ticket punched. So I got to do this, and that's... That's a tough one, right? That's a tough question. It's like a Zen riddle. What is the sound of nuance as you're running through your life from a zombie? And that's harder than the one about the guy with one hand clapping. So I think what we need to do is turn to the philosophers. I need their help. And why? Well, philosophers love zombies. They do. I'm not making that up. If you look in the literature, there are tons of articles about zombies in the philosophical literature, and that's because there's a whole school of philosophy devoted to the study of consciousness. And what's the key question when you discuss consciousness with philosophers? It's, it's how do you know that being conscious is the same thing as being aware? That's their big question. Now, this might strike you as silly. You might say to yourself, well, wait, wait a minute. If, if I'm taking in data, if, if I'm in the South Pacific and I, and I breathe that, salt, that salty air, that I feel that breeze, I'm, I'm aware and I'm conscious. They're the same thing. But that's precisely why the philosophers love zombies. They'll ask you very seriously. They'll say, could a zombie be rescued from his admittedly pretty routine existence if he were exposed to that same salty air? Could a zombie be aware of the South Pacific breeze and therefore escape? Now, if you've ever spent time with philosophers, you know that they will have a crystal clear, very straightforward answer. They will sit you down and they will say, it depends. <laughs> they'll say it depends on, on how you define zombie, and they'll say it depends on how you define human, and most importantly, they'll say it depends on how you define that messy space in between. What I'm gonna to argue today is that that messy space in between, it's getting messier. Those worlds are colliding, especially in our modern world. And that's a problem. 
because remember, what's the key concept when we talk consciousness with philosophers? It's how do we know that being aware is the same thing as being conscious? And they will tell you that a zombie can be conscious but not aware. We can be aware. And because zombies are cautionary tales, they remind us that by being aware, we can escape the everyday doldrums of modern existence. Because simply by being aware, we have, in fact, escaped. I mean, I mean think about it. What is the most heart-wrenching moment in, in any zombie film? It's the transition moment. It's the moment when the poor soul who's been bit is more zombie than human, but still human enough to know that he's not going to be human for much longer. And, and his loved ones watch on as his awareness leaks out of him. And, and he begs them, he says, kill me, man, kill me before I turn, before I transition. You've seen that a thousand times in A Walking Dead. And it is silly, because once you transition, once you become a zombie, you won't remember what it's like to be human. You won't care, so why not just take the last second of humanity? Because that's how much we value that concept of being aware. That existential fear of losing the capacity to be aware is so powerful that that moment makes tons of sense to us when we watch The Walking Dead. I think unless we're very careful in this modern society, we run the very real risk of engaging in the oxymoron of zombie consciousness. Now, why? Why do I say that? Because the forces that turn us into zombies are everywhere. I mean, how did you feel the last time you were subjected to elevator music? To, not, not classical music, ele elevator music. How, how did you feel? How did you feel the last time you phoned your wireless provider and you got a recording that said, your call is very important to us? And you know it's not your call, it's not Steve's call, because the next person's gonna get the same recording, right? So they are zombifying you, right? They refuse to acknowledge you, to be aware that you are a unique individual. How did you feel the last time you went to a shopping mall? That's a screenshot from Dawn of the Dead. If you see no other zombie film, see Dawn of the Dead, the, the original. What was Romero saying there? He was saying that you don't need a, a contagion or radiation or the rage virus to turn into a zombie. What you need is a shopping mall. You need the mindless consumerism of Black Sunday, Black Friday, whatever the new day is when those doors aren't yet open, you're shuffling to get in before opening hours. These forces that turn us into zombies, this stuff of modern society, some might even say the stuff of civilized society, it's, it's everywhere. But you know what? I think that can rescue us as well because we're pack animals, right? Zombies are pack animals too. They don't know that they're pack animals. We know that we're pack animals, and because of that, we do something else. We find out how we are unique within the pack. We find out how we're special. In fact, zombies, I would argue, help us to remember romance. Zombies don't feel romance. Zombies don't get married. Zombies don't have a prom. We have these things because within the pack, we have to distinguish ourselves as being special. That's actually absolutely essential for our survival. We're wired to connect with each other, and we do that by recognizing that which makes us special. This is why the zombie trope is so powerful and so popular these days. I mean, look at it this way. If something's going to eviscerate me, if a zombie's going to eat my intestines, I'd like it to be about my intestines. I'd like my intestines to be special. I would like the zombie to have said, I want Steve's intestines. But he doesn't. He doesn't care about my intestines. I can step this way and eat her intestines. It's not about me. Right? And that is maddening in this world. That is maddening for our species. We need it to be about us. We need to feel like we matter. We need to feel special in order to be aware. And zombies rob us of that. And we will do just about anything to stop that onslaught of anonymity that the zombie trope pushes on us. Let's see how it can go south on you. Imagine your morning commute. The, the person who cuts you off is not cutting you off. He's not cutting off the short, bald Harvard professor. That's not what's going on. He's cutting off the car in front of him. It has nothing to do with me. But if I'm going to engage in road rage, which is something I may have done every now and then because I live in Boston and that's what happens there, you know, I gotta make it personal. 
I got to say to myself, that guy is after me. Doesn't he know I have some place to go? Doesn't he know how important I am? Road rage is personal because we make it that way. And zombies, as a rule, they don't get road rage. Medicine. I'm a physician. What turns us into zombies is all over the medical world. Uh, colonoscopies, okay? An amazing procedure. I mean, nothing else has screened so successfully for a horrific disease, colon cancer. And, and the technology itself is amazing. I mean, you thread this wire to the GI tract, and in a millisecond, your inside is visible to the outside. You, you can tie it in a knot and see through it. That's how amazing the fiber optics are. But now, those of you who are over 50, and those of you under 50 have had a colonoscopy, think back to that colonoscopy. So the night before you do the prep, and whoever called it go lightly had a terrible sense of humor because there's nothing light about the way you go when you do that prep. But you do it, right? And, and you make it through the night, and you show up the next morning, and you feel kind of proud that you made it through, but you're also worried because you know they're screening for colon cancer, or maybe there's another reason. Maybe they found blood. Maybe they're actually looking for something that they think might be there, and you've got a wife, and you've got kids, and a dog, and a job, and you're scared, and then what happens? They hand you a Johnny, and they hand the person next to you a Johnny, and the person next to that person a Johnny, and everyone's butt is hanging out, but you can't even enjoy that because you've got to sit on a chair. So everybody's sitting down in these chairs, and just like that, you're transformed from a, from a Rachel with a wife or Barbara with kids or a Steve with, with two daughters and a wife and two dogs into a colon. That's it, you're just a colon, just another colonoscopy. And look, I, I apologize to the gastroenterologists in the audience because I know that is not the intention. None of us went to medical school for that. But the conveyor belt of modern existence actually puts us on that path unless we push back against it. Look, if you want to go someplace and see people turn into zombies without a contagion, go to the DMV, okay? <laughs> that, look, what, what you arrive, they take away your name, they give you a number, you stand in this long line and you shuffle forward and I gotta tell you, zombies don't care about the DMV. It doesn't bother them. They eat the person in front of them and they move on. That's it, okay? We don't like the DMV, but because we have these brains, we can be aware of the other things at the DMV. The last time I was at the DMV, and I swear, I'm not making this up, the last time I was there, the music on the loudspeaker was I Believe in Miracles. That was the song. The, the DMV over the loudspeaker actually called me a sexy thing. Now, at my age, this hairline, I don't want to miss those moments. So, so, when was the last time you stopped when you were stuck in traffic and looked at the sunset? Now, is this a cliche? Some of you are rolling your eyes. Yes, of course it's a cliche. Zombies are super cliched. I've hung out with the guys who make zombie movies. I've written a zombie novel. Zombies don't die just like cliches don't die, right? That's what they have in common. There's a problem to all of this, though. There's a very dark side of this. There's a reason zombies exist in the horror canon. When something robs us of our personhood, when something doesn't recognize us as unique and special, we react with violence and hate and rage. This woman from The Walking Dead is killing that zombie. Do you think that zombie cares? No, zombie doesn't care. Zombie won't even remember. She can't stand that that zombie doesn't care. So she's going to kill that zombie. If you give a man a shotgun and you show him a zombie right there, the chances are he'll use the last of his ammunition to blow that zombie's head off. He doesn't have to. All he's got to do is walk slightly faster this way, right? I mean, you can eat a sandwich while you're getting away from a zombie. That's how easy it is. They can't even walk. They can't open windows, but he won't. He won't. He's going to use the last of his ammunition, and he's going to blow off that zombie's head precisely because that zombie steals from him everything that he thinks matters, everything that makes him special. We need to feel special, and if something takes that from us, we can become violent. Scariest thing about a zombie movie? It's not the zombies. Come on, that's like a National Geographic special about snails. If you had a movie only about zombies, they would just bump into each other. The whole movie, you would get bored. The scariest thing about a zombie movie is how we respond to the zombies. And even worse, how we respond to each other. That guy with the shotgun, he's gonna blow the head off that zombie, and he's gonna blow off the head off that zombie, and then that zombie, and pretty soon he's gonna run out of zombies, and he's gonna start blowing the head off other humans, and before you know it, he will have become the very thing he's fighting against. 
even though he has the brain to know better, right? That's the most savage nightmare of modern existence. But we don't have to go there. Today is about escape. That's about pushing reset. That's about seeing new things, or, or maybe even seeing the same thing, but from a different point of view. Zombies, zombies can't do that. Zombies can't go to the DMV and find the person to take the prom, right? That doesn't happen to a zombie. But we can. We have a choice. We can choose to see the world as filled by being aware with these incredible experiences, like, like today. Or we can be a zombie, and we can shuffle through life in that routinized, mechanized way like they do in Shaun of the Dead. So ask yourself, which one would you choose? Thank you. Thank you.